Here's a movie that I didn't even know I was seeing until yesterday. Originally, I was supposed to be at the new Kevin Sorbo movie, until this film's midweek release changed all of the movie times, and suddenly the Sorbo movie was playing either too early or way too late. That's just great. So instead of being the only one in the theater at the Sorbo prison movie, there I was in a packed house sticking out like a sore thumb with a Beetlejuice bucket at it ends with us. I did get free stuff on the way in, though. The guy tearing tickets was like, uh, do you want this, uh, free patch they're handing out? And I was like, hmm, yes. So I got a trailer for this movie once, and the trailer was kind of a confusing sit. I was thinking, is this a rom-com? Uh, oh, is it a drama? Is it a thriller? The trailer is long, and there's lots of tones. It feels like it's showing me the whole movie. One minute, the trailer felt hallmarky, and then the other, lifetimey. Luckily, the movie is better than that. The characters are a lot more three-dimensional and way less cartoony than in something on Lifetime. It is an uneven film. You can definitely tell it's a book movie, almost like a YA movie if they took out the sci-fi and just left in the love triangle. It's the most 2012 movie I've seen in a while. It felt like something Sarah and I would have reviewed a long time ago. The characters have names like Lily Bloom, Ryle Kincaid, and Atlas Corrigan, like I can practically see their names typed out in a popular book. That said, I did really get caught up in this, and what makes it work is the main actors, all of whom have fantastic chemistry with each other. The movie is about abuse and how it can move from one generation to the next, with Blake Lively feeling like she's in a marriage that's repeating her parents' marriage. It spends a lot of time building up this relationship to where it seems off, but makes sense that the relationship happened. I like that when we meet him, there are immediate red flags, but this guy balances his performance really well. In one conversation, he'll say something weird, then charming, then kind of creepy, but then funny. There's dialogue that's good, with some lines that seem unimportant earlier, but then later you find it was nice foreshadowing about someone's past. Then there's lines that are a little sitcom-y or corny and kind of bad. It's got stock comedy best friends you'd see on TV, but goddamn, these actors still really sell it. Some of the editing is good, like how a few scenes are left ambiguous as to what happened, until later it's not, so it puts the viewer in a denial mode like the character. But then there's other editing that could be tightened. There's a lot of flashbacks in it, and they are important, but they do halt the pace of the movie sometimes. The casting on the young Blake Lively is very good, and there were some shots where I thought it was Blake Lively. Then the casting on the younger Atlas isn't great. The acting's fine, but he looks nothing like the older guy, and they also look the same age. Filmmaking-wise, it's competent. It does have more of a streaming movie quality to it, or even like I'm watching a few episodes of a network TV drama, but a TV drama that I would watch. I haven't read the book, so I'm curious what the fans of the book think of this as an adaptation, but for me, it was a B-, minus. nothing to rush out and see, but for what it is, I liked it. Thanks for watching, everyone, and be sure to follow us on our new Facebook page at facebook.com slash therealcinemasnob, where I post up pictures, links, and more every day, and we'll see you next time. Hey.